right, indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the show where the aim of the game is to avoid the obvious answers and find the obscure ones. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Uh, I'm Andrew, this is my mum, Siobhan, and we're from North West London. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Sasha, this is my twin sister, Lula, and we're from Camberwell, South London. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Pam. I've come here today from Bedfordshire, and my son is Ben, and he's come from Cheltenham. And finally, couple number four. I'm Dan, and this is Kenny. We're friends and medical students from Birmingham. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to the show. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. If knowledge is power, he's a bona fide AAA battery. It's my pointless friend, it's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Uh, how are you? I'm OK, you know. Oh, really? That yes. doesn't... You're normally a bit more enthusiastic than that. What's I'm up? all right. No, it's fine. I'm fine. Things on your mind? Yeah, th things on my mind. Things on my mind. Um, well, listen, we'll take your mind no, off for the next I 45 so. minutes yes. with some absolute high-grade quizzery, shall we? Oh, God, absolutely. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? And then yeah. you can go back to being upset afterwards. OK, that's fine. I'm sure it's nothing oh. bad. Oh, it's nothing bad. But listen, you've got, like, 40 kids. There's always going to be something going on. Well, you know, if it's not one thing, it's another. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, you should anyway. write a parenting book. Um, two returning pairs on yes. the show. OK, Andrew and Siobhan, welcome back. Got knocked out in round one last time. Hopefully we'll see more of you. This time, podium three. Uh, Pam and Ben knocked out in round two. I think I could be wrong. Think it's possible that it's our first ever Tallulah yeah. on Pointless. Is it really? I think so. It's our first Tallulah. I Hi. think so. How do you like that? Uh, shall I tell um, you something else? Yeah. When uh, we started Pointless, when Pointless was first on air, uh, Tallulah and Sasha were seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How do you wow. like that? You know those mental problems we were talking about before? <laughs> oh, anyway, no, that's great. Now, listen, back to the game. Alexi and Daniel got through to the final last time. They didn't win the jackpot, so we're adding another £1,000 to it. Exactly. Cool. So today's jackpot starts off at £3,250. Right. If everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. As ever, it will be the pair with the highest score that gets eliminated at the end of each round. So you just have to make sure your scores are as low as you dare get them. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this afternoon is... Famous people. There we are. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please, will they step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... People born in 1960, Richard. Yeah, people celebrating their 60th birthday in 2020. We're going to give you seven clues on each border sheet, the initials of the people as well. Can you tell us who these people are, please? Seven on the first, seven on the second, so 14 in all to have a go at home. Thank you very much indeed. So, let's reveal our famous people. And here's the first border clues. Argentinian, who claimed the hand of God defeated England in the 1986 World Cup, DM. Actor, who played the Prime Minister in the 2003 rom-com Love Actually. H.G., mathematician and host of Channel 4's Countdown from 1982 to 2008, C.V., Spanish actor and star of the 1998 film The Mask of Zorro, A.B., contemporary artist who accepted his 2003 Turner Prize dressed as his alter ego, Claire, G.P., British gold medal winner of the men's 100-metre sprint at the 1992 Olympics, L.C., and the original lead vocalist of 80s pop band Spandau Ballet, T. H. And here are those clues again. Argentinian, who claimed the hand of God defeated England in the 1986 World Cup, DM. Actor, who played the Prime Minister in the 2003 rom com Love Actually, HG. Mathematician and host of Channel 4's Countdown from 1982 to 2008, CV. Spanish actor and star of the 1998 film The Mask of Zorro, AB. Contemporary artist, who accepted his 2003 Turner Prize dressed as his alter ego, Claire. GP, British gold medal winner of the men's 100 metre sprint at the 1992 Olympics, LC, and the original lead vocalist of 80s pop band Spandau Ballet, TH. There we are. Andrew, welcome back. Thank you. Good to have you with us again. Yep. Got to be focusing on more than just round one. Anyway. Trying to get Should past we... round let's, one. Let's just say that. Goal. Remind <laughs> us all about yourself, Andrew. Uh, my name's Andrew. Um, I'm an assistant merchandiser. Uh, just become a dad, and I'm a big uh, football fan as well. Talk about the merchandising. What is that? What sort of things does that 
Um, just looking at promotions, well, seeing what's going to sell well, trying to see what to send out and looking at trends and stuff like and that. And these are merchandise for, for whom? Um, it's a major retailer. I'm not sure if I can say. What okay. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. One <laughs> but of them. I work on the electrical and personal care, so your kettles, your toasters and stuff like that. Very good. Now, Andrew, who are you going to go for on our board here? Um, I know a few of them, but it's just trying to think which one's going to be the least obvious. I'm going to go for the British gold medal winner and go Linford Christie. Linford Christie, says Andrew. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Linford Christie. That goes down to 16. 16. Yes, yeah, a nice start. Well played. Yeah, became the oldest man to win a 100 metre gold medal. But it's 32 years old he was at the time. Oldest man. Yes, 32. At 32. I know, but to be the fastest person yes. in the world. Yes, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Thank you. Uh, now, Tallulah. Hi. Welcome to Pointless. Thank Tell you. us all about yourself, Tallulah. Um, I am 18, as is mentioned-ish. I'm on a gap year. I'm working at a pub and I'm going to study at uni next year. Are you at any stage going off travelling? Is yes, the pub I am. I'm you're going, earning I'm going some... to Southeast Asia. That's why I'm working at the pub. Well, that's very exciting. Yeah. And then off to university. You know where yeah. you're going? Yeah, Manchester. What are you going to be studying? Social anthropology. That's exciting. Yeah, it is. Good stuff. Well, have a great year off. Thank you. Um, what are you going to go for on our board? Um, well, I was born a lot after 1960. Hey, oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so I'm going to go. No. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. 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 Whoa. Wow. Yeah. I mean, good luck with social anthropology because a lot of that was before your time. <laughs> <laughs> OK, proceed. Um, I'm going to go for the Love Actually actor, Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant is right. There we are, 38 for Hugh Grant. <laughs> yeah, it's looking good for 60, Hugh Grant, isn't he? Yeah. I have to say, I mean, a lot of these yeah. are looking good for 60. Big Fulham fan, Hugh Grant. Oh, is he? Yes, amongst his many other talents. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I don't, does he live in the UK, Hugh Grant? I haven't Hugh Grant, sure. I'm yeah. probably, I oh. imagine he's got more than one home, don't I you think? I should think so. All that love actually money, he's probably got a couple of homes. I should think so. Yeah, so he's probably UK, America, Chile. Ch I should think at least. Something everywhere, Central yes. African Republic. Probably. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Now, Pam. Hi. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, remind us all about yourself, Pam. Um, I'm retired, I have done teaching and massage therapy. I'm now retired, but I... Volunteer with the NSPCC, go into schools and talk about speaking out and staying safe. Enjoy time with my grandchildren, travelling. <laughs> How many grandchildren have you got? Five. Name them. <laughs> uh, Brooke is eight, Ruby is six. Oh, Jack she's good. Oh, she's good. Three. Yes. Tommy is five, and Rose is three. Ah, oh, that's Tommy, nice. Tommy got left out chronologically there. Well, I know. Sorry. You were going, yeah. no, that's all right. Well, it's because it's it's the father of Jack is here, it's, you see. Uh, oh, <laughs> no, you see, that's clever. Very tactful. Yeah, very nice. Very that. tactful. Yeah, well, hats off to you, Pam. That was brilliant. What are you going to go for, Pam? I think I'm going to go for the Spanish actor and hope that it's Antonio Banderas. You've got to hope. Certainly fits the initials. <laughs> uh, Antonio Banderas, is it? It's right. 38 is our high score. And you pass it. 16 is our low. There you are on 25. Not bad. <laughs> Antonio Banderas. Now, he's looking really good for 60, Antonio yeah. Banderas. But it's funny, 60? 60 is no longer a... It's not really that old what, anymore. Now we're 50. Now that we're 50. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, well, so when we young. were little, 50 was ancient, but now we're here. Yeah, it's, it's weirdly. Kind of, it's kind of teenage. Weirdly, the world has changed so that that, that is yeah. now actually quite young. There, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. There we are. Uh, now then, Kenny, welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Yep, so I'm Kenny. I'm 26 and I'm a medical student at the University of Birmingham with Dan. And you are in your last year. Final year. Yeah, that's right, yeah. This is exciting. So, whoa, the world of medicine. Yeah. Look out. It's about to hit uh, us hard. Kenny and Dan are about to approach. So where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Which field of medicine is going to uh, be your...? Not decided what I'd like to do yet, but I think I'd like to practise somewhere back home in Essex, somewhere near there, so I could be like, around friends and family. OK. Very nice indeed. Now, Kenny, this is your board. Do you want to go through all of those as yet unanswered I need people? four answers and three are gone, so I'm just going to go for the mathematician and say that's Carol Vorderman. Carol Vorderman. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Carol Vorderman. Carol Vorderman is right. Not a bad answer, 24. 
24, second lowest score of the pass. Very well played. Now she's looking good for 60. Wow, yeah. yeah. Isn't she? Yeah. Blimey. Mind you, 60 is nothing. It's, it's very young yeah. these days, yeah. isn't it? Very young. I'm right. led to believe. Yes. 60 is the Don't new 24. Enough, exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, shall we fill the rest of these in? The yes. Argentinian. Diego Maradona. Diego Maradona. Who scored you 29. The contemporary artist. Grayson Perry. Grayson Perry. Best dance on the board, actually. Grayson Perry, eight points. Well, I don't know if he said that. And Spandau Ballet. Tony Hadley. Tony Hadley. And he would have scored 14. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. 16, ooh, Andrew Siobhan, <laughs> this is looking great. Uh, 24, 25, and then 38. Tallulah and Sasha, you're not way ahead, but you are ahead. So, Sasha, a nice low score from you, please, in the next pass. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, let's put seven more clues up on the board, and here they are. All these people were born in 1960. Who are they? The Brazilian racing driver and three times Formula One champion A.S. Former England footballer and main presenter on Match of the Day, G.L. TV cook and author of How to Be a Domestic Goddess, N.L. Chat show host who began his TV presenting career on Channel 4's The Last Resort in 1987, J.R. First solo female comedian to win a Perrier Comedy Award at the Edinburgh Festival, J.E. Female singer of the 1981 hit single Kids in America, K.W. And Scottish author of crime novels featuring Detective Inspector John Rebus, I.R. I'll read those clues again. The Brazilian racing driver and three times Formula One champion, A.S. Former England footballer and main presenter on Match of the Day, G.L. TV cook and author of How to Be a Domestic Goddess, N.L. Chat show host who began his TV presenting career on Channel 4's The Last Resort in 1987, J.R. First solo female comedian to win a Perrier Comedy Award at the Edinburgh Festival, J.E. Female singer of the 1981 hit single Kids in America, K.W. And Scottish author of crime novels featuring Detective Inspector John Rebus, I.R. Dan. Hello. Welcome. I know quite a lot about you. I just do. From Kenny. Um, so, in your last year at Birmingham, yes. Um, well, which bit of medicine are you going to go into? I don't know. I change my mind a lot. At the oh. moment, I'd probably say anaesthetics is my number one choice. Excellent. Excellent. I mean, they're the, they're the specialists, aren't they? They're the yeah. people you really want to know what they're doing. <laughs> if you're going under the knife. And um, what are your interests, Dan? <laughs> um, I'm quite into sports, so I'm a big Norwich fan. Um, I play a lot of hockey. Um, do a bit of squash, a bit of football, five aside, that sort of thing. Excellent. Good stuff, Dan. On 24, you want yes. to score 13 or less at this stage yes. if you want a guaranteed place in the next round. OK. Um, I'm going to go for the Brazilian racing driver and three times F1 champion Ayrton Senna. Ayrton Senna. Says Dan, here is your red line. Can you get below that with Ayrton Senna? Let's see. It's right. It's a good answer. Dan goes to 24, exactly the same as Kenny scored, in fact. Take your total up to a nice, even 48. Well played, yeah, the late, great Anton Senna. Some people say the greatest racing driver uh, of all time. Thank you very much, Richard. Now then, Ben, welcome back. Hello, mate. Uh, remind us all about yourself, Ben. Uh, events and hospitality, industry, consultant, bit of cooking, bit of uh, everything, really. In that, in so what kinds of hospitality did I mean, do you, what so sort of things do you start, tend to...? I started when I was 15, just scrubbing yeah. some pans, as you do, and then progressed up to uh, hotels, and now I prefer outdoor events in the summer, and... Kitchen in, kitchens in the, in the winter. Plenty going on in sunny Cheltenham. Yeah. Uh, now, Ben, 25 is your score at the moment. 22 or less gets you into round two. I know a few of them. One's risky, the other two are probably quite high. So you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm going to go risky. Chat show host, Jonathan Ross. Jonathan Ross, says Ben. Here is your red line. Can you get below that red line with Jonathan Ross? Let's find out. Jonathan Ross is absolutely right. Down you go to 15, comfortably through. Take your total up to a nice round 40. That's great work, Ben. Well played. Yeah, his mum was an extra in EastEnders for over 20 years, just across the way in Elstree here. That's great. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now then, Sasha. Hello. Welcome to Pointless. Uh, tell us all about yourself. So, um, I'm 18 as well, we're twins. Um, I study history and politics at Newcastle University. How is that going? It's good, it's good you've fun. You've just started, yeah, I mean, you've done one year. term. Yeah. Is it as much fun as everyone says university so is at fun. Newcastle? Yeah. yeah. So, I gather. What sort of things do you get up to? Well, I'm a pub quiz host at my mm. local pub. 
So that's quite good fun. But it's not really helping me here. No, I was going to say, are you, I mean, hosting means nothing if, it, if you can't I remember. Write it, I if write I could it remember, well. if I could remember all yeah, the stuff that goes through my amazing. head. Amazing. Mm. I know. I know tons. Mm. Don't put yourself down. It's quite hard hosting a quiz. Thank you. <laughs> Um, anyway, Sasha, there you are on 38. If you can score nine or less, oh, you're easy. into the yes. next round. OK, the one I wanted has gone now, but I'm going to go for, purely because I like a bit of football, the match of the day, probably quite high, is Gary Lineker. Gary Lineker says, Sasha, let's see if that is right. Let's see how many people said Gary Lineker. There is your red line. It's right. 38. 38 <laughs> takes your total up to 76. Exactly the same score. For twins, that's just perfect. Yeah. Oh, exactly yeah. the same score for each of you. I mean, that is genuinely the last yeah. thing you wanted to happen, is get the same score as your twin. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, he's presented Match of the Day for over 20 years now, Gary Lineker. <sighs> wow. Yeah, took over from Des Lyon. Yeah, still think of him as the new boy. Yeah, amazing, yeah. isn't it? Thank you very much indeed. Now, Siobhan. Yeah. Welcome back, Siobhan. Thank you. Uh, remind us all about yourself, Siobhan. Um, I'm um, from London and I work in, as operations manager in a photographic uh, shop. What are your hobbies, Siobhan? What do you like giving I up like, to? I uh, like walking, uh, but I've got a terrible sense of direction, so I get lost a lot. But, but, but that, that makes for brilliant yeah, walks, though, I've, doesn't I've it? All, I've come across things that I would never have come across. See, that's great. Yes, yeah, so that's quite good. And I love the theatre and things like that. So any, anything. And quizzing. We go quizzing as a... Yeah, so. Perfect. Well, look, you were the low <laughs> scorers in the first part of this, so it's born fruit. So what are you going to go for? If you can score 59 or less, you're into the next round. Do you want to talk us through the gaps? And um, Nigella Lawson, I think, is the domestic goddess. The one that I want to go for, but I'm not sure. I think that's uh, Jenny Eclair and then Kim Wilde. And the bottom one, I've just gone from my head. I've even watched it, but... <laughs> So the one I think I'll go for, because I'm not sure about Jenny Eclair, is uh, Kim Wilde. OK, Kim Wilde, KW, says Siobhan. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Kim Wilde. There is your red line. It's right. <laughs> and you're through. Look at that. Well done, Siobhan. <laughs> That's a great answer. Down to 25, takes your total up to 41. Well played, Siobhan. Played that very, very nicely. Indeed, you're absolutely right about Nigella. It's also looking unbelievable for 60. And she would have scored 32. You know what? You're quite right about Jenny Clare as well. Would have scored you one point. Oh! oh. That could have been a <laughs> lovely answer. Uh, and the bottom answer? Ian Rankin. The brilliant oh. Ian Rankin, one of our finest writers. And he would have scored you 14 points. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. So at the end of our first round, we have to send one of our pairs home. And I'm sorry, Sasha and Tallulah. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank I'm you. sure we'll go much further then. But meantime, thank you very much indeed, Sasha and Tallulah. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. <laughs> very well done, everybody. Into round two with relative ease, I would say. Ben, our lowest individual scorer. Ben and Pam, our lowest combined scorer. So very well done on that middle podium. Anyway, best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... World Geography. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please, will they step up to the podium? OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many African countries that are not in Africa. Mm. Yeah, simply looking for any country of the world that begins with one of the letters A, F, R, I, C or N, but that is not geographically in... Uh, yeah, don't panic. Uh, <laughs> but it is not geographically <laughs> in Africa. So any country of the world that begins with one of the letters of the word African, as always by country, I mean a sovereign state that's a member of the UN in its own right. Fantastic. But it's fun, isn't it? not in Africa. It is fun. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Fun is precisely what Andrew's having right now. <laughs> what would you like to go for? Um, I know a lot of countries, but every one of them seems to be in Africa. Uh, I'm going to go for the N and go for Nepal. Nepal, says Andrew. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Nepal. Nepal is right. <laughs> that goes down to four. That's a great start to the round. Well done, four for Nepal. 
So I played Andrew Yates in Asia. I was the same as you. The second you say not in Africa, the only ones you can think of are African countries. <laughs> uh, that has the same population roughly as uh, Mozambique, but um, five times smaller. Not the people. <laughs> the country. Oh, oh I'll recalibrate. Yeah, yeah, the country. Ah, the country. Yes. Thank you. Uh, now, Pam. Yes. Pam, what are you going to go for? I think I'm going to go for Colombia. Colombia. Says Pam. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Colombia. <laughs> Down it goes to 10. <laughs> 10 for Colombia. Colombia, it's in South America. It begins with a C. Couldn't fit the criteria more beautifully. No, it's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Dan. Hello. Dan, what are you going to go for? Uh, I'm going to go for Cambodia. Cambodia, says Dan. Let's see how many of our 100 said Cambodia. <laughs> Dan to six. Very well done. These are all good scores. Really good scores, yeah. Slightly smaller than Uganda, Cambodia. Mm. Think about mm. how big Uganda is. Got it. Uh, make it slightly smaller. Got it. Move it to Asia. <laughs> got it. Hold on. What do you got? Cambodia. Cambodia. Oh, exactly. Yeah. That. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. That's helped. We're halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Four. Well done, Andrew. Best score of the past. Up to six, then up to ten, where we find Pam and Ben. Good luck with that, Ben. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK. Now, Kenny. Hello again. Kenny. I mean, for what it's worth, if you scored three or less, you'd be straight into the head-to-head. -head. That'd be nice, yeah. What do you want to go for? Andorra. Andorra, says Kenny. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Andorra. Here comes your red line. Andorra is right. <laughs> Four. Very well done indeed. Takes your total up to ten. Uh, yeah, Andorra's roughly the same size as the Seychelles. Ah, huh. if you but... just put them all together. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, um, Ben, what we need from you now is a pointless answer. You'd be straight into the head-to-head. -head. That'd be nice, yeah. What do you want to go for? No pressure. Um, OK, let's go high risk. There's uh, going to be some out there. Faroe Islands. The Faroe Islands. OK. Faroe Islands, how many people said it? Is it right? I'm sorry, Ben. No stress. I'm sorry, that scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 110. Yeah, sorry, Ben, it's part of Denmark, the Faroe oh, Islands, I'm afraid. Uh, thank you, Richard. Now, Siobhan, you're through. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you actually score. I have no idea how relieved I am. <laughs> I was just like, it's, I, I'm not going to get you a point. Let's just, just say that. Uh, I'll go with uh, Canada. Canada, says Siobhan. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Canada. No red line for you. You're already through. Canada is right. Takes you down to 36. <laughs> Takes your total up to a nice round 40. Okay. Yeah, you could, you could fit roughly three and a bit Canadas inside Africa. Canada's very big. It is big. It's the point there. Now, yeah. Nepal and Andorra both scored four points, both terrific answers, so I'll give you everything that scored four or fewer. Four points as well for Costa Rica, for Cyprus and for Fiji. Well, I don't know if you said any of those. Three points for Antigua and Barbuda. You would have got two points for North Korea, one point for Azerbaijan and Nauru, and there's two pointless answers, and they are the Federated States of Micronesia and North Macedonia. Very well done if you said any of those. The top three scorers were Canada, India and France. France scored 93. Thank you very much indeed. Well, that brings us to the end of our second round, which means we have to say goodbye to another pair. Oh, Ben and Pam. <laughs> I'm sorry. North Macedonia yeah. and the other one, Micronesia thing. Federated States of Federated Micronesia. Federated States yeah. of Micronesia. Well, these are ones we should all remember. Store them away for <laughs> yeah. a rainy day. Actual countries. Yeah, they are actual <laughs> countries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in brackets. Um, anyway, it's been lovely having you on. Thank you Thanks so much, so Ben much. and Pam. Brilliant. <laughs> But for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for the head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Dan and Kenny, Andrew and Siobhan. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands... 
at £3,250. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, let's see if we can't boost that jackpot a bit by finding some pointless answers. Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Game of Thrones characters oh. as they could, Richard. Yeah, six names on the board. Two will be Game of Thrones characters people have heard of. Two will be pointless answers who are Game of Thrones characters. And there'll be two that we've made up as well. So to see if you can get those pointless answers, £250 for each one you do. Um, so we are looking for the pointless Game of Thrones characters here. Here's our list of six potential candidates. Osher, Mance Raider, Tywin Lannister, Denethor, Aziraphale and Ilaria Sand. I mean, they're all nice names. <laughs> yeah, nice all of them. Uh, feel free to chat as a four, because uh, it, oh. it's in everyone's interest well, to find these... Uh, I don't know any. Sorry. Mansredo is definitely one as well. Mansredo and Ilaria Sand, though. Denethor's from Lord of the Rings. Oh, sweet. sweet so then it's going to be Osha. Is, is... I've heard of Osha. I don't know where from. Yeah. Let's have an answer from you, Dan and Kenny. We're going to go for Ilaria Sand. Ilaria Sand. Let's see. Is Ilaria Sand a pointless Game of Thrones character? It's right. That's a pointless answer. Very well done indeed, Dan and Kenny. Fantastic. OK, Andrew and Siobhan, can you find the other pointless answer? Um, he <laughs> shot me. Try and hope that it's um, Osha. Osha. You're going to go for Osha or Osha? Yeah. Let's see. Is Osha, Osha a pointless Game of Thrones character? <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> Oh, it's right. That's right. Oh. Are we going to get the double whammy here? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, there we are. Very well done indeed. Two correct answers, one of which was pointless. Richard? Yes, yeah, a valiant effort. Well done. A nice teamwork as well, because I think you worked out very early that uh, Denethor was from Lord of the Rings. So that was incorrect. The other incorrect one is Aziraphale, which is from uh, Good Omens, the Neil Gaiman book. And of the other two, I think you worked out that Tywin Lannister would have scored points. Indeed, he did. And Mance Raider, therefore, is the other pointless answer. Very well done. If you said Mance Raider and Alaria Sand at home. Thank you very much indeed. Well done. You managed to find one pointless answer, which means we're adding another £250 to today's jackpot. Take the total up to £3,500. <laughs> but who will be paying for it? Let's find out in the head to head. As ever, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Here comes our first head-to-head -head question, and it's all about people who have spoken at the Oxford Union. Richard. Yeah, it's simply five famous faces, but who are they, please? OK, let's reveal our five people who've spoken at the Oxford Union. Here they come. A. B. C. D. And E. There we are. Dan and Kenny, you're our golden couple, so you get to go first. OK, we're going to say C, Akala. C, Akala. Now then, Andrew and Siobhan, over to you. Can you talk us through C that board? C was the only one we didn't know. <laughs> so <laughs> I think um, uh, B is Mary Berry, D um, is Emma, what, what? Watson, A is Mark Hamill. So E, we're going to go for E, which is... Desmond Tutu. Desmond Tutu. So you're going to say Desmond Tutu for E. So we have Akala and we have Desmond Tutu. Dan and Kenny said Akala for C. Let's see how many of our 100 said Akala. Is right. That goes down to four. Very well done indeed. Four for Akala. Meanwhile, Andrew and Siobhan have gone for Desmond Tutu for E. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Desmond Tutu. Desmond Tutu is right. Takes you down to 34. 
Well done, Dan and Kenny. And Carla wins that one for you after one question. You're up 1 0. Yeah, very well played. Uh, you filled these in very, very nicely. Mark Hamill went to speak at the Oxford Union when he was uh, filming the last Star Wars movie. He would have scored you 22 points. Mary Berry talked about her life and about baking at the Oxford Union. She would have scored you 67. I bet that would be a good talk. Uh, and D uh, is Emma Watson, of course, and she would have scored you 39. She's a fellow of Lady Margaret in Oxford. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Um, OK, now, here comes your second question, Andrew and Siobhan. You know what you have to do. Good luck. Um, our second question this afternoon is all about the Remembrance Sunday ceremony. Richard. Yes, yeah, simply five clues to facts about the Remembrance Sunday ceremony. It's always broadcast on the BBC. Thank you very much. Let's reveal our five clues. Here they come. We have got the Remembrance Sunday ceremony it takes place on the second Sunday of this month. Three word inscription on the sides of the cenotaph. Name of the charity that organises the March Past on Remembrance Sunday. The English architect who designed the cenotaph. And the number of minutes silence observed at 11 a.m. I'm going to read those all again. The Remembrance Sunday ceremony takes place on the second Sunday of this month. Three word inscription on the sides of the cenotaph. Name of the charity that organises the March Past on Remembrance Sunday. The English architect who designed the cenotaph. And the number of minutes silence observed at 11 a.m. There we are. Andrew and Siobhan, over to you. On the last one's two minutes. Some people might say one minute. Yeah. Uh, and such to you. Such uh, to you. We, we sort of only know, I think, the two obvious ones on there. Um, so we're going to go for the bottom one and go um, two minutes. Two minutes, say Andrew and Siobhan. Two minutes silence observed. Dan and Kenny, can you talk us through the rest of that board? Um, the Remembrance Sunday ceremony, maybe November? The, um, the three words one is it's probably something we remember, but I forget what that first word is. Oh, no, less, something less, less, less. Is that it? That's what less I think you remember. Or something like that, yeah. Let's go for that. Yeah. I think, because the other ones like... we're not too mm. sure about. We'll go for that one and say, lest we remember yeah. for the three word inscription. OK, lest we remember, you're going to say. So we have two minutes silence and lest we remember. Andrew and Siobhan, two minutes. Is that right? How many people said it? If it is. Fifty-eight. Uh, Dan and Kenny have gone for lest we remember the three words written on the sides of the cenotaph. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that, but let's see if it's right. No, not lest we remember. Um, which means, well done, Andrew and Siobhan, you're back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. Uh, yeah, I was toying between two answers there, one of which was lest we forget and one of which was we shall remember, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, and it's neither of those. Oh, really? I heard yeah. lest we forget. I, no. I assumed oh, it would really? be lest we forget. Yeah. 11 of 100 did say lest we forget. Uh, but it's not, it's not one I've heard for, actually, so very well done if you said it. It is the glorious dead. The glorious dead is a pointless answer as well. So terrific work if you said that. Um, you're quite right, it was November. Wouldn't have won you the point. Would have scored you 71. The name of the charity? Royal British Legion. Royal British Legion. That would have won the point, 37. And do you know the English architect? Edwin Lutchins. It is Edwin Lutchins, yeah, absolutely. And that scored five points. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. OK, right, all comes down to this last question. <laughs> Best of luck to both pairs. Here comes question number three. It's all about animals spelt with chemical symbols, Richard. Uh, yep, yeah, we're now going to show you some lists of chemical elements which, if you put <laughs> their symbols together, spell out the names of animals. We've done this before, haven't we? We have. Yeah. Um, OK, let's reveal our chemical clues, and here they are. Carbon, radium, boron, protactinium, nitrogen, thorium, erbium, beryllium, argon, sulphur, hydrogen, argon, potassium, and lithium, oxygen, nitrogen. There we are. Dan and Kenny will go first. OK, we're going to have a go at protactinium, nitrogen, thorium and erbium and say panther. Panther, say Dan and Kenny. Now, Andrew and Siobhan. Do you want to talk us through that board? Um, the bottom one, I think, is lion. The middle one is B-E-V-E-V-E -E -V -E -V -E and it's bear. Top one would be C. Can't think what radium is, and then B. So an animal with C and B on either side. 
No. And <laughs> second important one, sulfur, S-H-A-R-K. Go for that one. Yeah. I'll go for the sulfur, hydrogen, argon, and potassium and go shark. OK, shark. So we have panther and we have shark. Um, Dan and Kenny went for panther. Let's see if that is right for the protactinium one. How many people said it? Panther. Panther is absolutely right. And Panther goes down to three. <laughs> Very well done. Uh, meanwhile, Andrew and Siobhan have gone for shark for the sulfur, hydrogen, argon, potassium. How many of our 100 said shark? Shark is right. And shark takes us down to 15. Not bad. But very well done indeed, Dan and Kenny. After three questions, you're through to the final 2-1. Uh, yeah, they were the best two answers on the board, so uh, well played both teams. I think Shark scored well because of the K at the end there for, for potassium, so it wasn't immediately obvious. You'll kick yourself with the top one. What starts with a C ends with a B and it's got an R and an A in the middle? Crab. Crab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, forgive you, though, because you've got Shark, which is harder. Uh, that would have scored 22 points. You're right about Bear. That would have scored you 30 and Lion at the bottom there. Scores 39. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head to head round. Andrew and Siobhan, I'm afraid it's you. But still, you've come all the way through to the head to head. You've done fantastically well. I'm sorry, this is where we had to say goodbye, but thank you so much. Well, thank Andrew you. and Siobhan. But for Dan and Kenny, it's now time for our pointless fight. Congratulations, Dan and Kenny. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £3,500. <laughs> what is going to win it for you? What do we need to see come up on the board? Uh, so I'm quite into television, uh, Big Brother. So something about Big Brother winners or contestants, that would be perfect for me. Dan? Uh, I like my sport. It's probably football being my best one. I could go for OK, well, very, very best of luck. Four things would appear on the board, and those four things for today are Wimbledon, pop careers of the X Factor judges, creative barbaras, and authors born in the 19th century. What do you think? It's between the pop careers of the X Factor judges or Wimbledon. I think we're going to go for Wimbledon. OK, Wimbledon it is, Richard. OK, very best of luck, gents. We're looking for any of the following, please. We are looking for any year in which a British player won the men's or women's singles title at Wimbledon. We are looking for the name of any American who has ever won the women's or men's singles title. Or we are looking for any player that has won Wimbledon, men's or women's singles, but have won no other Grand Slam. So years a British player has won, any US player has ever won, or players that have won Wimbledon, no other Grand Slam. Usually we start at the open era, but for this we're not. We're going back to the very, very beginnings of Wimbledon. So we're going way back when, up to and including the 2019 tournament. Thank you very much indeed. OK, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of your answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. Let's put a minute up on the clock. There it is. Your time starts now. How are you feeling about this? Not great. <laughs> the years would be a bit of a yeah, guess, a wouldn't it? I think US players that have won Wimbledon, I'm not really sure, apart from the obvious ones. Yeah. Um, players that have won Wimbledon and know of a Grand Slam. I think we should have maybe a go for guesses at that. Yeah. How about, let's do one guess for that have won Wimbledon. And then two guests to the other one. Because I was, I was US maybe, players. Yeah, because what came to my mind was Naomi Osaka. That's what came to my mind. I'm not sure where she's from. US players. I think US players, yeah. Okay, we'll go from that. That's fine. Players that won Wimbledon and no other grants. Uh, Let's continue. I've got some names of some tennis players, but I'm not sure which ones. Yeah. Right, like, let's give a guess. And Andre Agassi, I think is what comes to me. Brian, Brian Teacher. Yeah. Ten seconds left. Yeah, Brian Teacher. Let's go for Madison Keys. Kim Clash yeah. is one of them. Yeah, we'll yeah. Kim Clash just might be more likely to have won it. OK, that is your time up. Let's have your three answers now. So, US players that have won Wimbledon, Naomi Osaka. Naomi Osaka. Players <laughs> that have won Wimbledon and not other Grand Slams. We're going to say Brian Teacher. Brian Teacher. And we're going to say Kim Kleisters. And Kim Kleisters, also for that category. OK, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Naomi Osaka. Yeah. OK, yeah, Naomi Osaka yeah, will put Osaka. last. Least likely to be pointless? 
Tim Kleister. Tim Kleister's, and then Brian Teacher goes yeah. in the middle. Well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. Kim Kleister's, Brian Teacher, Naomi Osaka. Well, three answers on the board. If any one of these turns out to be pointless and won that jackpot for you, 3,500 quid, what would you like to do with it? Dan, you first. Um, well, going into starting our foundation news next year, might be moving into a place of my own, so it'd be good to get some stuff to sort of kit that out, maybe Very get a good. car as well. Good stuff. OK, Kenny, what about you? Uh, yeah, similarly to Dan, put it towards a car. I mean, I've not driven since I passed my test in 2016, so blessings and then a car. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, excellent. OK, well, let's hope one of these answers wins that jackpot for you. Kim Kleisters was your first answer. In this case, we're looking for any player that has won a Wimbledon but no other Grand Slam. You've gone Kim Kleisters. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. For 3,500 quid, is it pointless? Kim Kleisters. No, not Kim Kleisters. So let's move on to... It's exactly the same category, and you've gone for Brian Teacher, people who won Wimbledon, but no other Grand Slam. How many people said Brian Teacher? No, not Brian Teacher either. OK, let's hope your third and final answer turns out to be a correct and a pointless answer. In this case, we're looking for US players who've won Wimbledon. You've gone for Naomi Osaka. For £3,500, is she pointless? How many of our 100 people said Naomi Osaka? No! Oh, bad luck. I'm sorry. Well, that was a game effort, but I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you won't be winning today's jackpot, but you get to take home today's uh, pointless trophy, so very well done for that. And you played very well right across the show, so well done on that score. Uh, yeah, Kim Kleisters won uh, Australian and US Open, not Wimbledon, I'm afraid. Brian Teacher, Naomi Osaka, never won Wimbledon. Apart from that, though, they're all tennis players. Yeah. That's the good thing. See, so you, you nailed that. <laughs> um, now, let's take a look at these years a British player had won Wimbledon. The first ever uh, Wimbledon was 1877, which we remember because Virginia Wade won on the centenary year, which is uh, 1977. There's 1935, 1961, 1969. Uh, Americans who won Wimbledon. Don Budge won a couple of times in the 30s. Helen Wills Moody won all sorts of times. Lindsay Davenport, pointless answer. Stan Smith as well. Althea Gibson, a pointless answer as well. Uh, Bobby Riggs. Maureen Connolly as well, so some good pointless answers there. Now, players who won Wimbledon and no other Grand Slam. Uh, Conchita Martinez, uh, Jana Novotna, Lottie Dodd, Petra Kvitova. Everyone was a pointless answer there, apart from Pat Cash, Goran Ivanisevic, Marion Bartley, Michael Stick, and Richard Krychek. All the other correct answers were pointless. Very well done if you got one at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thank you, Dan and Kenny. I'm sorry you didn't get to win our jackpot today. That'll therefore roll over onto the next show, when we will be playing for £4,500. <laughs> Join us then, see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.